Good morning, guys. Back with another bulletin for you, a double shot of content today. Yesterday was supposed to be my double shot of content, but then there was a network outage on the uh, internet here at my father's house. I'm going to be here for a few more days, paying a visit during the holidays, but in any event... Uh, I guess that worked to you guys' advantage because here comes another double shot. So some of you may have looked at the title on this. Oh my God, here we goes again. Another clickbait. Once again, I do my very best to not clickbait anything and to back up my titles with research with real evidence and indeed this exists now this is something associated with a story that came out that was not particularly interesting not particularly exciting but you know a feast for the eyes i suppose and these were views of mars during the winter time showing uh, you know how frost accumulates uh, both in terms of liquid water and also dry ice so all of it was, of course, very interesting to see, also very interesting to discover how, uh, you know, these particular patterns and landscape features on Mars come into existence. So, yeah, all very interesting, but not particularly relevant to things that I usually discuss on my channel until I found out that there was something called Martian geysers. Now, maybe I'd, I'd heard a little bit about this in the past, but not a huge amount, but it was interesting to me. I didn't know that we were aware of the presence of geysers on Mars, and so I started looking into that and what caused them, and lo and behold, there's actually a biological explanation for, the, for what we are observing on Mars associated with these geysers. So a team of Hungarian researchers came out with a paper a few years ago describing how biological material could create some of the effects that we are seeing on Mars. The coloration of the aftermath of these geysers, their general behavior, just why these things happen in the first place. There could be a biological cause associated with this. And since it's been out for a few years, it's been able to endure the rigors of peer review. And guess what? But other groups of scientists and exobiologists have come to the conclusion that their argument is actually quite valid. So is this absolute proof of life on Mars, the findings that they've come out with? Well, no, but if you combine it with all of the other discoveries that we've made that could also have biological explanations, it's becoming extremely convincing, becoming very, very likely that at the very least, we have extremely resilient types of bacteria on the Martian surface, cyanobacteria and others. And I'm going to tell you all about these geysers, all about these funny bacteria that may indeed exist there and why the evidence is so convincing right now. Our journey takes us to the polar regions of Mars, which have proven to be a very strange place indeed. Now, it can be quite beautiful, as was revealed to us recently, with all of the accumulated frost, both in terms of dry ice and also water ice, but this has broken up. These magnificently and beautifully sculpted dunes are broken up by these strange black features that grow seasonally depending on temperature and other conditions. Conditions. It's quite remarkable. Now, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter and Mars Express have revealed that these long, dark streaks tend to appear in the spring and summer months and then vanish in the winter. They suggest that the, there are subsurface ice deposits intermittently melting and running and then retracting back into the soil as the thermometer falls. Now, there are lots of different theories as to what causes all of this, but one thing is certain. Some of these features are too large to be explained by running water on the Martian surface. The pressure is too low, the temperature isn't right, these things would simply evaporate or sublimate before they could possibly spread this far. Instead, in 2006, yes, a very long time ago, the following theory was proposed, quote, we propose that the seasonal ice cap forms an impermeable, translucent slab of CO2 ice that sublimates from the base, building up high-pressure gas beneath the slab. 
The gas levitates the ice, which eventually ruptures, producing high-velocity CO2 vents that erupt sand-sized grains in jets to form the spots and erode the channels. These processes are unlike any observed on Earth. So yes, we're talking about sand geysers created by CO2 erupting out of the Martian surface. So here's the process in a little bit greater detail. During the winter time, the poles of Mars drop to about negative 129 degrees Celsius, so cold that the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere freezes to form a layer of dry ice about 20 inches thick. And then on spring days, dry ice is warmed by the sunlight and begins to turn into gas, some of which is trapped beneath the planet's surface and the remaining ice. When the pressure grows strong enough, the gas erupts through cracks or vents like a steamy jet. As the day goes on and the planet's surface warms, the eruptions become larger. By midday, the gas also carries dust, which by evening has fallen on the surface in long fan-shaped patterns. The material is ejected from the Martian surface at speeds of over 150 kilometers per hour, and because of the low Martian gravity, they climb to heights of several hundred meters and get spread over very large areas. Now, that in itself is tremendously interesting. However, what's even more interesting is the fact that this team of Hungarian researchers discovered that the characteristics of what they call DDSs, or dark dune spots bear a great deal of resemblance to similar phenomena that have been discovered in Australia. What they argue is that even though geysers may cause some of this phenomena, the fact that the patterns seem to reappear over and over again in the same areas cannot be explained by geyser activity alone. Instead, the team believe that what we are watching is the life cycle of a cryptobiotic crust, and yes, that may May sound strange or like an episode of Ancient Aliens or something like that, but it's something that actually exists here on Earth. Here's the process that the researchers claim we are watching every season. First of all, in the late winter, CO2 and H2O frost covers the dark dunes, and Mars surface organisms are in a dormant state. Once again, these are probably similar to cyanobacteria. Then in the early spring, the CO2 ice sublimates by spring sun sunshine, dunes in the Mars surface organisms warm up. Then in the late spring, solar heated grains melts the H2O ice, and Mars surface organisms metabolize. Liquid water then seeps on the dune slopes, or perhaps their geysers occur. It's hard to say which. And then after that, all of the H2O has gone away, and the Mars surface organisms then revert back to their dormant state. So even though we may be watching geysers, the extremely predictable and repetitive patterns of these dark dune spots also suggest that we are watching the life cycle of organisms, cyanobacteria in particular. Now, the reason that the researchers believe this is because the terrestrial cryptobiotic crust that have been observed in central Australia has a similar pigmentation, and this is, of course, characteristic of cyanobacteria. This dark pigment is accumulated in the gelatinous shape of the cyanobacteria and protects the living cells and its assimilating pigments from an overdose of intensive UV radiation, which of course is something that's very common in Central Australia. Extremophiles like cyanobacteria are very well suited to survive on the Martian surface. They can remain in a dormant state for millions of years in the harshest of conditions, which of course they wouldn't even have to do in these circumstances. They would only have to survive survive through the cold, dry season and then flourish during the spring and summer. This is a very compelling argument, and all of the observable data fits with their hypotheses. Thus far, up to this point, their paper has not been debunked. At the same time, though, it's not overwhelming proof for the existence of life on Mars, but very interesting nonetheless. And if you combine this with the positive results of the label release experiment on the Viking lander and also the discovery of strange spikes of methane in the Martian atmosphere, 
atmosphere, also happening on a seasonal basis, and the strange spikes of oxygen in the Martian atmosphere, again happening on a seasonal basis, well, this is becoming more and more of a court case that should have a hanging very soon. That is to say, the evidence is getting to be overwhelming. Now, is it extraordinary evidence for extraordinary claims? Well, no, probably not. I would say that there's still going to be naysayers regardless of what evidence we find until we actually put Martian regolith underneath an electron microscope. But up to that point, I would say that there is an extremely good chance that life is flourishing on the Martian surface right now. Abundant life, and not just deep in caves, but rather on the regolith where Viking could have scooped it up rather easily. And incidentally, evidence like this, this particular paper was published nearly 20 years ago, and it's been largely forgotten. It's very tough to find any media stories about this paper or about the possibility of life being associated with these Martian geysers anywhere. And given that human beings may be setting foot on the Martian surface within the next 10 to 20 years, it's time for us to dust off these studies and start taking them very seriously. Please smash that like, hit that subscribe. We are well on our way to 100,000 subscribers. I can taste it right now. Thank you so much for your support, and please check the description for various ways to keep me bringing you this content. And as always, stay angry about space.